Good morning, family. Are y'all happy to be here? I'm going to get started. But when they played that song, I'm a worshiper, right? Like, I love to worship. And as they were playing the song, I was like, I can't, I can't leave this just yet. Not just yet. Because I want you to literally hear the words, it is well. I think as I was sitting there, for someone in particular, maybe online or here, you really need to hear those words and as more than a song. You need to hear those words as the rhema word for God to you right now. It is well. So I want you to, I don't even know the song, but the, it is well. Go, go to that part. Yeah, yeah, Got you, yeah. brother. <laughs> and I want you to hear it, but I want you to hear it as God speaking to you. Because he's speaking to you, somebody, and I feel him so clear that you got to know it is well. It's crazy outside, but he's telling you it is well.
That's it, right there. My eyes are on you. That's it, right there. Through it all, through it all, it is well. That's it. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Amen. It is well with me. So, this morning, if you don't mind, I'm just going to flow. My scripture, we're going to talk about, but I'm about to weave this thing together. Because if you heard, you heard about being chosen, and then you heard about this immaculate conception, and you're like, okay, where is all of this going? And then you hear, it is well. And like, what in the world? How does all of this fit into the journey to the cross? And you're probably wondering, that doesn't make sense, Lewis. But as I was praying this week for my family in LaGrange, all I kept hearing was that there's glory within you. There's glory. But how many of you know that that's not easy to handle God's glory? And so today I'm going to talk to you very briefly on what this means to carry God's glory. So don't go too far. You can leave, take a break. But I won't be here long, I promise you. <laughs> Don't be. I'm so happy. Before I get through it, before I get there, man, I'm so happy to be with y'all. How y'all doing? Yeah. How you doing? How you doing online? I'm so happy to be with y'all. I am ecstatic to be able to come back home with family. And when I got the call, I was like, it was not, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, I'll be there. Most definitely. Since the last time that we came, um, we've gotten a lot busier, which I didn't know I could get busier. But anyone that got teenage boys, you know you can get much busier. And so we, we've had a lot of um, LJ and Josiah have just been growing leaps and bounds. LJ is actually in St. Louis right now playing basketball. And uh, Josiah is with his grandparents. And there he's actually waiting for me to get done today so he can go to a Pacer game. So we're going to, once we leave here, I pick him up and then we have to be at the Pacer game. And so he's excited, like, come on, hurry up and preach, Dad, so I can, I can get to the, to the Pacer game. I thank God for my babe rolling with me. We've been traveling and moving around a lot. And so she's been great, being able to just hang with me as I roll. Um, and I thank God for you. I thank God that God has kept you and continuously continues to bless you. And I thank God for the community that you all have and how you have, are affecting the community. That means you are truly being the disciples of Jesus Christ. And we thank God for that. But as I begin to start thinking about this birthing the glory and when Nate called and was like, hey, we're talking about journey, the journey to the cross. So I started listening uh, the last few weeks so I can kind of get into the rhythm and the flow. And as I was going and getting into the rhythm of the flow and I'm seeing his progression, I was like, okay, Nate, how I see it is um, we see this move that's happening all the way from Adam and Eve and we're seeing it through the Old Testament 
we got to get Jesus born so he can die. I was like, so let me deal with him being born. And then we get to, I said, then you can take it from there. He was like, okay, that makes sense. So as I begin to think about this idea of this birth, this birth, which we really honestly don't even think about until Christmas. That's the reason why when you read it, it's kind of like a shock to your senses because I don't read, why are we reading Christmas and Easter? That doesn't make sense, right, to us. But when you're thinking about it, why not? Why not think about this birth? Because I believe, and you think about this, I'm convinced that most believers don't recognize, believers don't recognize that their body and their spirit houses the spirit of God. I'm talking about believers who sing on praise team, who speak, who serves. I don't think we're really cognizant that you hold and you carry the Spirit of God within you. Not because we don't, not because we try to not believe that. But honestly, when you really sit and think about it, you start thinking, that's hard to comprehend. How is it possible that I, according to the scriptures, carry the spirit of God because God is so great? He is so majestic. How is it that his spirit is housed in me. How is that? And so, without us really thinking about it, we will actually reduce the idea into manageable terms. We will reduce God simply because we want to comprehend him. And we comprehend what we can control. And so we will manage him and reduce him until we can control him. Because if we can control him, we can then now comprehend him. But can I tell you something? God don't need your box. He don't want it. If you look... In the scriptures, in Jeremiah, the Bible says, Jeremiah 10 and 12, it is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. Isaiah comes along in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. He says this about God, look up into the heavens. Who created all of the stars. He brings them out like an army. One after another. Calling each by his name. Because his great power and incomparable strength. Not one single one is missing. This God is so powerful. But what's crazy. All of that is within me. Ooh, you may say, Lewis, I want to believe that, but you're going to have to give me some Bible on that, Lewis. That doesn't, yeah, I hear you, but I, I okay, I got you. Colossians chapter 1. I want you to hear these words, verse 25 through 27. This is Paul speaking. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. Listen to this. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. 
And this gives you the assurance of his glory. The greatness of God is housed within the ordinary human. That's, that makes me have a problem with this concept. And you should too. Because this concept doesn't make sense that I hold glory within me. It, it, it doesn't make sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is because you know you. And I know me. And everything that comes to my mind isn't always great. Everything that I do isn't always great. How is it that a holy, magnificent, great God is housed within a flawed human? How is that possible? It, 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 and, 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 and if I'm not careful, I will come to church, hear the words, read the scriptures, and not believe them. Because it takes time for it to really sink in. You are within me? You, the great God who knows the names of the stars, you within me? Well, here's why it doesn't sometimes make sense. What do you do when what's going on outside of you doesn't match what is happening on the inside of you? What do you do when every circumstance around me seems to be contrary to the God that's in me? The journey to the cross is filled with people whose outside circumstances does not match what God has placed on the inside of them. You've been hearing about Abraham. You heard about Ruth. Last week you heard about David. These very ordinary people, very ordinary People who God was using to bring to a crescendo. And if we're not careful, we will read those stories and not really see what's really happening. These were everyday people. They loved God, but they had no clue that God was using them to do something magnificent. And now, in our text this morning, we see a little girl in the town of Nazareth. Nazareth was a city roughly 55 miles north of Jerusalem. And during the first century, the Jews held those that were in Nazareth in very low esteem. You can see this in John chapter 146 when one of Jesus' disciples asked, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a lowly place. It was in a hillside country. It was a place... No one knew about or cared about. But there we find this lowly, ordinary young girl that's chilling, having her normal day. I want you to see it. See, see, see Mary, there was nothing great about Mary. Mary was ordinary. She was like you and me. She would be likened to uh, a young girl you may see at the band competition playing 
the fiddle or something. And you just see her. It's just, uh, you wouldn't think nothing of it. Mary was ordinary. But she had one thing going for her. Mary was chosen. Now, here's the deal. You want to think, what did she have in her to be chosen, right? What was it that made her be chosen? And that's what we need to emulate. But can I tell you something? According to the scriptures, there was nothing in Mary for her to be chosen. She was ordinary. Yet God chose her. I want you to see why I chose for our chair point what Jesus told his disciples. You did not choose me. I chose you. See, when you are going through the vestitudes of, of life, one thing you must remember is that God chose me. It wasn't nothing that I done. It wasn't nothing that I, you, and it's hard for us to, 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 to really hear that because you, you think there's something in you that makes God want you. And God said, no, I chose you because I wanted to. What made Mary different was simply she was chosen. You must remember you're chosen. And you may say, Louis, is that really a big deal? Think about it. Mary is married to a car. She's engaged to a carpenter just like most girls at her age. It's going through her normal day. And then one day, I want you to really see this, out of nowhere, there's an angel that pops up. And he named himself, so he let you know, I'm Gabriel. I really want you to think about this. Like, for real. You're at home, ladies or gentlemen, working on your car or cleaning, washing dishes and clothes or you're out at a job. You do it every day. Get up, brush your teeth, put your clothes on, go to work, and while you're just doing your thing, an angel pops up. And tells her, Mary, you are highly favored by God. Hold up. Between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there have been 400 years. They call it the silent years. God had not spoken through angels for 400 years before he pops up. And now he's talking out of nowhere to an ordinary girl, have an ordinary life, and tells her she's favored. Mary looks at it and says, what? Who are you? I'm Gabriel, and I come for one reason, to let you know you've been chosen for something great. As she's been chosen for something great, he then tells her something even more remarkable. You are about to be pregnant. Hold up. 
I know I'm about to marry Joseph, so okay, that's cool. I know that's happening soon. And then he tells her, oh, yeah, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. It's not going to be Joseph's baby. What? I'm pregnant. I'm about to be pregnant. You chose me to, to be pregnant? You may say, Lewis, how does that relate to us today? We may not be having the same exact experience as Mary, but according to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible lets us know that when you received Christ and you were born again, you became pregnant through the imperishable seed of the word of God. You may not necessarily be like Mary, but here's the deal, you're pregnant too. When you received God, God said you, you took the seed of the word. And that seed of the word is now in you. That seed of the word is his glory. And his glory now is in you through the Holy Spirit. So when we look at Mary, it parallels to what's happening with us. Mary is pregnant with glory that didn't come from no man. And you are pregnant with glory. And the Bible says it came from God himself by your faith in Jesus. And so now, can you imagine Mary leaves this crazy experience? And when she leaves, and we don't know fully when, but she leaves pregnant. Have you ever, there's something about being pregnant. For the first few months, you can't see on the outside what's happening on the inside. I remember when my babe was pregnant with LJ. We had no clue. She looked the same, had the same energy, wore the same clothes. We had no clue that she was actually pregnant and that there was something on the inside of her growing. We didn't know. And if you are the, on the outside looking at the person that's pregnant, you will tell them there's nothing different about you. You're just you. But there was something on the inside that was happening that no one else could see. Can I holler at you and tell you that some of the things that God is doing on the inside of you, you can't expect everyone on the outside to see it. There are things that God is doing on the inside, and if you're expecting other people to be able to comprehend what's happening on the inside, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Because they're not going to understand that God has placed something great on the inside of you. Mary was walking around pregnant, and no one could see it. She was pregnant with a promise and no one seen it. She looked the same. Until one day, the angel had told her that Elizabeth, your cousin is pregnant also. Mary goes to Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth opens the door, the Bible tells you, you can read this and Luke continue to read in chapter 1. The Bible says something leaped inside of Elizabeth. You know why? What was inside of Mary began to attract what was inside of Elizabeth. The reason why we come together as believers, there are some time you need to be around other people that got the same thing happening on the inside. 
You need to be around other people that can be able to understand that there's something growing on the inside of me. Regardless of what is happening on the outside of me, there is something magnificent. There's glory on the inside of me. And I need to be around people that begins to understand that. Because Elizabeth didn't even know. She just said, Mary, how blessed are you? Mary is now carrying this glory. And as she's carrying the glory, the Bible says she leaves Elizabeth. And now she had to go through the process of carrying glory. I seen this with my wife when I when she was pregnant. What was on the inside began to start changing what's on the outside. It slowly began to she got can you see her her clothes started changing. She started showing more. She started and other people started seeing what was happening. Mary is walking connected to Joseph and she's pregnant but here's my point if Mary would have stayed pregnant and never birthed what was in her me and you will still be in our sin it's not enough to be pregnant with glory saints It's not enough to know that I was chosen. It's not enough to to what was in me begin to affect just me. It's not enough. She had to go through the next process. She had to birth what was in her. Any woman will tell you Giving birth is the closest to death. Why? It's not an easy process to birth what's in you. Can I tell you, and I came literally from Anderson to tell you this one thing. You are in the season of birthing. That's the reason why you seem like everything is going on with me and I can't find my bearings. Any woman can begin to see, can you imagine, and I only know this by what she has said and what I've read. Uh, uh, Have you ever, women that have had birth before, did you like contractions? Put your hand up if you just love to have contractions. Come on. If you're online, just put put it in there and say, I love having contractions. The closer it got, the harder it got. The closer you're about to birth what God has placed in you, all of a sudden, the contractions happen. We may look at it, if you're not careful, that that's the devil. And I'm here to tell you, no, it's not. Because here's the deal. With contractions, at first, they're kind of long and apart. Am I right? Y'all, y'all holler at me, women. If I'm wrong, tell me. And you, oh! You good. Oh! It's getting closer together. Oh! It gets to the point where it seems like you want you all of a sudden going through one pain after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. And if you don't understand the process, you will think I'm about 
to die, but really what's actually happening, you are now about to give birth. LaGrange, that's what God is doing with you. You're feeling the power, and you're feeling the hurt, and it's coming. Rapid, rapid, rapid. And God told me to tell you, you're about to give birth. If she would have stayed pregnant, what was on the outside of her would have never experienced what was happening on the inside of her. There are things in God has been doing inside of this place. Hear me. I'm done, Sarah. Y'all can come. I told you I wasn't alone. Because that's all he told me to give you. There's things that's been going on in your personal lives and then collectively. That if you don't have the right perspective, you will then deem it one way when God is saying that's not what's happening. And then your belief will trigger a reaction that is not what he wants. He's saying simply, you got to have right perspective through this time. You have to know What I'm doing, it is of me. I know it doesn't feel like it. You may say, Lois, I'm dealing with family issues right now. And I don't, this is hard. And I'm here to tell you, God is saying, I'm about to birth something. I wish I could go deeper. So this was just an overview. But I want you to see on the journey to the cross there was a seed that had to be passed down generation to generation to generation till finally it got to Mary and it was time for that seed to come forth there's been seeds that's been moving from generation to generation to generation and God is saying right now where you are at you are in a season that it got to come forth what I've been preparing you for and it's more than just for you it's for your family it's for your community it's for everyone that is connected to you but you got to know he said I'm about to birth the glory And mind you, the glory is not about you. That's the reason why I wanted to tell you the seed that was in Mary had nothing to do with Mary. She was just the one that was carrying it. What God has in store for you, you may reap the benefit of it, but it's not about you, baby. Because If we go further, the same seed that she finally had the birth also caused her the most anguish. That same seed, it changed the world, but she became a woman of sorrow. But I want you to realize this. God has chosen you to birth something great not only just in your family but in your community. But you have to go through the birthing process. And the way that you're going to get through it is by faith going to have to trust God when you don't recognize or don't feel like he's there and you don't feel like this you're going to have to trust him so the song that they're about to sing now is Lord I need you the reason why you got to sing that song is because Lord if you don't help me I'm going to mess this up I'm going to mess it up God But God is saying, you got to trust me and keep coming back to me and know that what I've started, I'm going to complete. You have to trust me while 
you are birthing the glory. Let's worship. you and give you peace. Go have an amazing week.